What's going on guys? Today's question is, should you have milk in your coffee? Okay, it's a common question here. I'm just gonna take a quick sip of mine. Now let's get into it. So, a lot of people wanna know like, oh, you know, I've heard about, um, you know, can I have milk in my coffee? Should I have skim milk? Should I have cappuccino? All these different types of things. And at the end of the day, you can have whatever you want in it, except for sugar, okay? Don't don't have sugar. You don't need freaking sugar in your coffee. But apart from that, when it comes to drinking your coffee, what you want to think about is where, like, so a different types of milk have got different types of calories, right? So whole milk is going to have more calories than skim milk, and a black coffee is going to have zero calories, okay? Now, I want to run through these all really quickly to give you the best idea about what type of coffee you should drink and when you should drink it, what's going to be the best thing for you. So... First of all, you want to think about what your goals are. If your goals are to lose stubborn belly fat and you've been having trouble trying to lose it, well then reducing the amount of calories you're putting in your coffee could be really, really beneficial for you, especially when it depends on how many coffees you're having a day. If you're having two, three or four coffees a day with milk and with sugar and with cream, well then that's going to be adding up to a lot of calories. So the first thing you want to do is think about how much you're consuming. So if you're consuming four coffees with milk, cream, and sugar, if you just cut out the sugar and cream, that's going to cut a lot of calories out of the coffee. What I always suggest is try and make it as tasty as possible without sacrificing the actual taste of the coffee. Because at the end of the day, some people, they just don't like the taste of black coffee, which is what I always recommend first because it's got zero calories. Now for me, I really like the taste of black coffee, but sometimes I do like to have milk, so I'll have whole milk. But my goal isn't to try and reduce my calories. Now, if you're someone who doesn't consume that much coffee during the day, maybe you have just one or two, well, then have the coffee however you want it because it's not going to make a huge difference and you can reduce the amount of um, of calories from somewhere else. So whatever you want to do, first of all, making sure you realize how many coffees you're having during the day and what you're actually putting in them. What if you chose instead of having two, like uh, instead of two flat whites, you had two skim flat whites? Well, it's going to cut out a little bit of the calories. Or what if you decide to have one flat white and then one black coffee? It's all about making those little types of trade-offs. But at the end of the day, you don't want to be sacrificing all the things you enjoy to lose stubborn belly fat and then never be able to have it again. What my goal is is to help you integrate lifestyle habits that you can change on a whim and make sure that you can sustain it. So if you reduce the coffee and cream, if you reduce the sugar and cream in your coffee, and you just stick to having just milk and you can still enjoy that coffee, well then that's gonna be so much more beneficial for you. So the first thing is to think about how much coffee you're drinking during the day, how many cups and what's in it. If you're only having one cup, have the coffee however you like it. Now let's talk about the different types of coffees. You can get a long black, you can get a cappuccino, you can get a, um, you can get a flat white, you can get a, uh, what are the ones called, the really small ones, espresso, whatever they're called, right? You can get all these different types of ones, and then that's going to determine the amount of calories. So when you start with the long black, long black is going to be the most, the best thing for you because it's got zero calories. Then you can walk up to a long black, and what I like to have is a touch of milk in there. So I actually want to have a flat light. I'll just pour a little bit of milk in there. So maybe it's about 50 to 100 mils as opposed to having the rest of it with milk. After the um, touch of milk, then it goes to a uh, then it goes to a flat flat white, right? And that's going to be probably one of your most calorie dense wines, your flat whites and your cappuccinos and your mochas and all those types of things. But then another good option is to just have your little espresso one in the morning, boom, you have it and then you're good to go. It all depends on why you want to get this too. Do you want it for a hit? Do you enjoy the taste of coffee? All these things are going to play, right? But what you want to think about is if you can tolerate a long black with a little bit of milk in there and you're happy with that, well then go with that because at the end of the day, that's still going to reduce your calories. But if you're someone who needs a flat white with two sugars and cream, but if you can reduce the two sugars and cream and still have a flat white, that's going to work best for you. If you can get a flat white with skim, that's going to be better too. Just make the smaller, better decisions. Don't try and cut everything out at once. Don't try and eliminate the things you love because at the end of the day, you're still like, you know, you want to be able to enjoy your life. You don't want to deprive yourself of all the things you enjoy. So instead of depriving yourself, make sure that you just make a little bit of smart decision instead. Think about how much coffee you're drinking. Can you reduce the amount of calories in there and still enjoy the coffee? And then enjoy it every day. Make sure you enjoy the things you love while still losing stubborn body fat. Now, what I want you to do is pick up the free first chapter of my ebook that I've just released 
All you have to do is click on the link below and I'm gonna send it straight to you and that talks to you about the one key factor you need to know about losing stubborn belly fat. That's the video for today and I'll speak to you guys tomorrow.